2023 was a great year for Terraria, with us getting a ton of news about the next update, a board game, and of course, even more amazing mods. And now that the year just ended, I thought it would be the perfect time to go back and take a look at all of the best mods that came out in that time. To kick this list off, we will first be looking at the major content mods that were released this year. And of course, we have to start off with the jaw-dropping Starlight River. This was one of the most hyped mod releases of the year, with overhauling a huge portion of Terraria, while also adding new bosses and items that each have amazing art to go along with them. The thing that sets Starlight River apart from other mod packs, though, is all of the creative features that are all high quality, like the squid boss fight that has multiple phases while locking you out from the outside world. Some other features that are also well done is stuff like the Forbidden Winds ability, the archaeology features, their in-depth lore, and a ton of other things. But we're gonna go ahead and move on now, since it would take too long to go over everything in this massive pack. Moving on to the next mod pack now, we have Fractures of Penumbra. This is a mod pack that aims to add in new high quality features into every area of Terraria, alongside its own storyline and lore. So far, this mod pack has two new bosses, which each have small cutscenes when summoned. 36 new weapons that have great effects, two new NPCs, one biome alongside two natural generated structures, and much more. Both of the bosses will have their own custom attack patterns, with one arguably being harder than every boss in Vanilla Terraria, but that's balanced out with the new weapons it adds. This mod pack adds in some of the craziest weapons I've ever seen in Terraria, like the Ascended Being, which is a magic weapon with a custom animation, the Heartbreaker, which is a magic hammer that deals a ton of damage, the Apocalyptic, which finally allows us to hit trick shots in Terraria, and much more. This mod adds in a number of other things as well, but since we already covered the major things, we'll be moving on to the next mod for time's sake. Next, let's take a look at Devilish Arena, which is a small content mod that adds in a new dimension alongside some great items. This pack will make a portal shrine appear in the underworld, and once you activate your portal by getting into hard mode and going through it, you will be brought to the Devilish Arena, which is where you can get the new items and fight the new boss. Before you can fight the boss though, you will need to go through some waves of enemies. But once you're done with that, the devilish snake will spawn, which has crazy attacks alongside multiple phases. There's also a mini event in the underground snow biome where you'll find this small shrine. And once you click the tablet, an invincible enemy that can instantly kill you will spawn. And you'll have to stay alive with it for 60 seconds. Besides those two things though, this mod pack also adds in five new weapons, but not too much else else, since this was meant to be a smaller mod pack. The next mod is called Conquest, and it adds some amazing content. The first thing that I happened to really enjoy was their own version of a skill tree, but there's also things like dungeons that you can fight through to get special loot, permanent potions, new shimmer upgrades, and much more. In total, this pack adds in over 150 new items, 3 new bosses, roughly 50 new weapons? and even changes some things in the vanilla game. There's also a new type of accessory called artifacts, which give you some amazing buffs, like stopping time, increasing the enemy spawn rate a hundred times, increasing your damage by a hundred percent, and a few others. Overall, if you're looking for a mod pack that's small, but still really good, this would be a great option. Moving on to the next helpful mod, we have Magic Builder. This mod pack adds in items that will instantly build biome-specific houses in different sizes. Each biome will have four different house options, the smallest being the smallest possible housing, in case you want to easily store your NPCs away. And then after that, there's a small, medium, and large house for each biome. Each of these items can be crafted, but once you've crafted at least one, you can get the new NPC that comes with this mod, which will sell those items, so you don't have to craft them anymore. And for the last section in this video, we have mods that aren't really helpful per se, but are still fun to mess around with for one reason or another. And that's especially true with the first mod in this section, which is Kerbo Pets. 
This mod pack adds in 13 new items, all based around these little Kerbo dudes. Six of these new items are pets, with each one having a different color and specialized name. But there's also two more pet items, which will either summon three of them at once if you're using the Star Cross, or all of them at once if you're using the Star Cross Ultra. There's also two light pets, with the first one just being a normal light pet that's actually pretty bright, and the second one being a special light pet that you can get after the Wall of Flesh but can also upgrade later on after you beat Plantera. And finally, for the last set of items, we have three different summoning weapons. The first one is named the Star Cross and deals 20 base damage. After that, we have the Super Star Cross, which will deal 55 base damage. And finally, for the last item in this mod, we have the last summoning weapon, named the Super Star Cross Ultra, which is the strongest weapon out of the three, with it dealing 70 base damage. Arsenal is the next mod in this section, and is probably the biggest pack in this section as well, since it adds in close to 300 new weapons. This mod is still in an open beta state, with about 75% of it being finished at the moment, but you probably wouldn't have even noticed that, as everything in this mod works amazingly. Now, I obviously won't have time to cover every single weapon in this mod, but there are some ones that are extremely neat, like the three weapons that are based off of the Zenith, with one also being based off of the unreleased Final Fractal. There's also 10 different yo-yos, 20 different magic weapons that are books, an upgraded version of Waffle's Iron, a ton of swords and staffs, and much, much more. But we're gonna go ahead and move on for time's sake. And finally, for the last mod in this video, we have Heart Beataria. This mod isn't exactly helpful or funny, so I didn't know exactly where to place it in this video, hence why it's at the end. But it's still extremely neat, and is one of the most downloaded mods this year. This mod pack adds in almost everything that's exclusive to the Chinese version of Terraria, like the Star Merchant NPC, all of the KFC collab items alongside other collabs, and various other things, like a few car mounts. I won't spend too much time on this mod since I have an entire video dedicated to it, but in total, this mod pack adds in 25 new paintings, 18 new vanity sets, 8 new pets and weapons, 5 new mounts, 4 new furniture items, and finally, 1 accessory. That wraps up this video! If you're interested in trying out any of these mods for yourself, I have all of them in a collection on Steam which you can find in the description. And while these were just my personal picks of mods that came out this year, be sure to let me know in the comments what your favorite mods were. Also, sorry for not uploading for a bit, as I took a small break since my last video was so long, but I'm back to uploading like normal now. Thanks for sticking to the end. Be sure to like and subscribe for more Terraria videos like this in the future. And as always, make sure to have a wonderful day.